gang, Evan Sutton here. Today we're going to talk about Absinthe and we're going to just do some basic sound design and make a little bit of a funky bass sound to get you going with basic enveloping and modulation functions. So grab a blanket, get cozy, let's get moving. So I've taken the liberty of programming a nice little bass line here and I'm going to go ahead and bring up Absinthe and I've, I've gone to File, New Sound and what that does by default is it brings up a single sine wave. Inside of Absinthe we have a handful of different pages that we can go to. I'm going to start on the patch page and this is where we actually uh, set up our different modules. So we have three different channels here. Each of these channels can have its own oscillator module along with a filter and something that goes in this mod slot such as a wave shaper or a frequency shifter, something like that. And then all of these sum down here and go into this master section. So these effects down here at the bottom, these modules modules you bring up, such as a wave shaper, a filter, and an effect, these are going to affect all three of the channels here. The rest of these channels here are discrete, meaning that they're separate. So we're just going to start up by using one, and I'm going to go ahead and click on where it says sign in order to change the wave. So I'm going to change this to a sawtooth, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK, and I'll hit play here and we can listen to the bass line I have. I can switch it back to a sine wave or preview different waves just like this. And you can actually hear that we're getting a bit of a click. Well, if I'm getting a click like that, generally the first place I look is the release of the amplitude envelope. Now by default, when you set up a new sound in Absinthe, it's going to give you amplitude envelopes for all three of the oscillators. So we can go ahead and take a look at those by clicking on the envelope page, and I can see all three of them here. You'll notice that actually the release on my oscillator A amplitude is really tight, so that's what's giving us that click. I can go ahead and adjust the release by moving this breakpoint here. Now let's listen to it. Okay, good. And some of you might be wondering, hey, Evan, why do I have uh, a oscillator B amplitude and oscillator C amplitude envelopes? Well, the answer is we have those even though we haven't enabled either of these oscillators. You just get those by default. Ad nauseum, free of charge. You heard it here first. So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to a uh, saw real wave. And I'm going to change the oscillator mode to double here. Okay. And now what double means is that I actually have two oscillators uh, in this one oscillator module. That's why I said oscillator module earlier, because each oscillator module can actually encompass more than one oscillator. So if I go to the mod tab here, I can actually see the options for the second oscillator. Okay. And now the balance is going to be the crossfader between the two waves. Let's take a listen. So at zero, we're hearing 100% sawtooth. And if I push it back up to one, you can hear that we're hearing all sine wave. I can change this. I'm going to go ahead and change this to like saw filt maybe. Or maybe a square wave. How about a smoother saw? That'll be nice to blend. And I'm actually just going to put this at 0.5. That means I'm hearing equal amounts of both sawtooths. But Evan, why do I want to do that? Well, because we can do a little bit of detuning if we like. So I'll just pull down where it says transpose here. This is where we deal with tuning. And we have a few different modes. I'm going to leave it in transpose, which means it's going to transpose away from whichever key I hit on the keyboard. If it's at zero, it's going to play the exact pitch you hit on the keyboard. We can use these diamonds here to slide up and down. So I could tune it up an octave if I want. Or I can tune it down. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pull down on this diamond all the way here to the right. And I'll pull it down just a little bit. And then I'll push this one up just a little bit on the other page. And what we're going to get from that is a little bit of detuning. So it can make it a bit of a more lush uh, sound we get a little bit of movement there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a low pass filter, okay? I'm just going to click on this filter module to bring it in. And by default, it's on low pass filter for pole. That's fine with me, although we have plenty of different things in here. I'll stay with low pass filter for pole. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn up the cutoff frequency. That's what this is right here. Notice this is in Hertz. We can also change it to transpose if we want uh, so that it can key track, but we'll just leave it in Hertz right now. And I'm going to push this diamond all the way up so that the filter is wide open by default. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it open like that. And now what we want to do is actually create an envelope 
to modulate that cutoff frequency. So in order to do that, we have to actually create a new envelope. If we look in the envelope page, the only ones that we have in our list here are for the amplitude, so we actually have to make a new one. And to make an envelope for just about any parameter in absinthe, all we do is right click on that parameter. Then we can go ahead and click where it says create a new envelope. So once again, all you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on the parameter that you would like to create the envelope for. So for example, I want to modulate the cutoff frequency here. And I'm just gonna right click on that number and go to create a new envelope. And then it'll take me over to the envelope page and voila, I have this new envelope here. It's gonna come out as a straight line when we start, but if we bring down the attack and release breakpoints, we can actually see something that resembles more of an envelope that we're used to. So let's take a listen to it now. Okay, so if I go back to the patching section here, I can turn up resonance a little bit. That's going to boost the cutoff frequency slightly, and it's going to help us get some emphasis on the movement that the envelope is imparting upon our filter. Okay, now let's take a listen to our bass line. And if you have Absinthe 5, you'll see this little purple guy running by showing us exactly where we are in the envelope. If you hold down the shift key, you can actually look at more than one envelope at the same time. Okay, and we can bend this thing all around if we want. Maybe for this style, it'll be nice to have a quicker attack. We can make it a little bit thunkier. And we can drop the sustain level down. This breakpoint horizontally represents the decay time and vertically the sustain level. So if we drop it, then we can get a nice uh, no sustain thunky baseline. <laughs> Let's hear it with drums. Okay, let's say we want to add a little bit of dirt to our sound. We can go ahead and in this mod area we can bring up a wave shaper. So by default it's coming up as a frequency shifter, but I'm going to jump down to the wave shaper. Now the wave shaper is a transfer function, and we can use it to create a little bit of distortion. Here's without, here's with. So we're really hearing that detuning. So I might want to tighten it up a little bit. And if I choose a different wave to use in the wave shaper, we might be able to make it a little crunchier. Ooh. The saw sounds nice. We can make it actually a little bit crunchier by turning up the in dB. That's getting a little too digital for my taste right now. Maybe we'll just go back to the sine wave here. It gave some nice beef. Good. I think that sounds pretty good to start with. Now I've taken the liberty of creating a little lead sound over here that we'll go ahead and throw into the mix here. And we can hear our finished product using this nice thunky bass that we made. <laughs> Now perhaps you might want to make it cut through a little bit more. So what we can do is we can actually make it a little bit, a bit heavier. We could bring up the sustain, first of all. Okay, the other thing we could do is we could add another wave if we wanted to. Okay, so for example, we could go here and just add a sine wave, an oscillator B. We could drop it an octave. Go ahead and tighten up the release on oscillator B amplitude.
And then to tie it all together, we could put another wave shaper in here for both of them. Now we're getting into a sort of a different kind of style, but I, I like it. I like what's happening here. All right, that's good. Let's add one more thing. Let's go ahead and add oscillator C. I'm gonna add it as a square wave, square reel, okay? And we'll go ahead and transpose it up an octave. And this wave shaper is really having uh, a big effect on the sound and when it gets through, it's really interesting. So we'll go ahead and tighten up the release. All right, this is heavy. Maybe we'll try something different. With this wave shaper in here, all of these oscillators are really affecting each other quite a bit. Let's hear it without. There, I like that. We'll turn it down though. Make sure and keep the emphasis here. And let's create an envelope on the pitch there, the transposition. So I just right clicked where it said transpose, hit create new envelope, and boom, we got it. We'll go back here and we can create a pitch, uh, a pitch slide that goes upward. Four might have been nice. So we've kind of blown out the sound a little bit. Let's bring down the NDB a little bit. So now we're kind of out of funk based territory, but you, you're hearing some of the possibilities here in Absinthe uh, with the wave shaping, with the different modulation possibilities as far as the envelopes are concerned. So let's take a listen to how this thing sounds all together with our drums and our lead one more time. <laughs> This is Evan Sutton, also known as Astrolith. You can catch me at astrolith.net. I'm the co-designer and developer of the sound design and synthesis program here at Dubspot in New York City, as well as online. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll catch you next time. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, Dubspot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore Dubspot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.